everybody. Today is October 2nd, 2018. This is MMA Junkie Radio's pre-show, the show before the show. I am Goes, that's Dan Tom, and the voice you hear in your head, that's Danny Holkers. Mm-hmm. That me. I said it. I did it. Today is Tuesday. It means we're that much closer to the big fight. Huh? Was it part of the sponsor? Uh, I moved it because Javier Mendez will be here in a bit. Way to spoil everything and tell everybody who's going to be on the show, goes. Oh, yeah. By the way, everybody, uh, Javier Mendez will be on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was just telling uh, Darius from Poland. Look at Jason Laggy just walking in the shot. <laughs> just walking in like Bigfoot. Uh, I was telling him who he is now. And he, he's with it. So remember, Darius, so everybody else is in their uh, capes and stuff, and you're just kind of in a Hawaiian shirt, and they're like, ah, oh, he's always at, so out of the box, and like you have like uh, a coffee minutes, instead of blood and stuff. Minutes. I know you people don't know what I'm talking Javier about, Mendes but it's a, really funny. I know what you're talking about. It's hilarious. Let's see if Coach Javier has an Instagram, uh, Twitter. <sighs> We're back. Yeah. Danny, you leave Thursday and Friday? I'm not going to hear. I'm not here Thursday and Friday. I'm not going to hear here? I'm not going to hear here. Does this look like I have something really cool on on. I uh, didn't know because it wasn't Sunday. checkmarked, so I was like, eh, you never know. The but Instagram account is, uh, can people, notable people follow him. Hmm. What'd you say, uh, Ochre? He he, Ochre? We're coming up in a minute, but I have something really cool that I'm doing on Sunday. That we officially got all the news back that it's approved and it's happening. Because he's talking to somebody off microphone. Yep. Coming up in 30. You know, yes, we are, guys. Yes, yeah, we are. How yes, are you doing, pre Because a people? lot of them were developed. There. I'm doing great. Some of the other gyms, they got guys, but they weren't <laughs> homegrown there. <too. laughs> yeah, it's probably them. Across the board, uh, Top Team doesn't have very many UFC, but other organizations spread out. They. Hi, right, guys. Coming up at 10. Stand by. Yeah, we are. Wait, do it over there. You're on camera. He's taking a call. Okay. The coach is taking a call and walk in. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McCarran Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is going to be a little bit bumpy. (laughs) All right, Junkie Nation, it's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Ghost. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long. What are the times? The MMA Junkie Radio Revolution is upon us. 10.30 and 11.30? Thank you. 11.40. 11.40. Thank you. There's no escape. No escape. Oh, no thank you. I'm okay. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM satellite radio technology, MMA Junkie Radio, commence transmission. Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. From the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sportsbook, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, the only show that matters. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly Goes, our ace co-host. To my left, it's the fight analyst, Dan Tom, back east producing Danny Otto. Our special co-host for the day will be Javier Mendez. He'll be coming into the studio very shortly. 
He got uh, an important call just as we were walking in, but he'll be our, our two-hour co-host, guys. Did you send him location? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. Nice. I did send him location. Well, actually, I had to scoop him up, um, <coughs> and that damn Las Vegas strip traffic almost got me there. So, oh, wow. Yeah, I uh, came tiptoeing in right now. Does he know he's going to be taking Uber back? He probably won't be taking Uber back. No. Really? No. Oh, man. You know what happens after the show, right? What? The Red Devils march onto the field oh, immediately after gosh. the show. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. Um, when I'm trying to get a big fish to be on the show, and he is a big fish, as far as I know, he's the only head coach responsible for four UFC world champions. Five, if you really want to give him Shamrock back in the day, Frank Shamrock. And now I know American Top Team's got, they've had their, um, they're world champions, you know. But remember, a lot of it, or I sorry, they were homegrown. Though. Well, that's the thing. Well, that's that's one good point. The other one would be, who do you attribute them to? Laborio, Mike Brown. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas all of these had Javier Mendez as the head coach. So that's kind of like, you know, if you want to divvy up Jim and uh, head coach. Are you saying he could be the coach? The coach? Yeah. <laughs> the greatest of all time, coach. Um. I'm going to ask him, point blank. I'm yeah, you know what? Well, so, so get this. The other day, uh, let's save it for when he gets here, and, and then we can talk about it. But but the other day, I did get a mention. Wait, where was it? Twitter. I think it was just simple. Twitter. I logged on, and somebody said, hey, who's the best one ever? And I think it was someone like, like well, that's Jim Edwards, right? Yep. I think it was someone that was, like, just initiating a, um, uh, a tweet or a conversation. I thought it was, like, a U.K. base. I thought it was just early in the morning. Somebody just put it out there. Maybe it was Sean Sh Sheehan, I think is his name. Um, I can't remember. And, and it was a simple question. And and I thought about it for a moment. And it didn't take me that long. I said, but I go, Mendez Cook has to be considered because I've seen him in the corner of yep. some great fighters. You know, and of course we can get into who's who and what they did. Uh, for one, Habib is the active, but Kane for a while was regarded as maybe the best heavyweight ever. And I'll be, and I'll say when 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 Javier is even here. Yeah. I mean, Stipe I think surpassed him. Um, and not Kane's not done though. DC arguably greatest of all time, if not one of, depending on where you sit with that. Luke now he didn't have a title defense, but he still became a champion and he's still a solid middleweight. So. Not only has has uh, he been a coach to some world champions, he's been a coach to some really great world champions, and currently the undefeated Habib Nurmagomedov. And, and outliers too, guys. Uh, you know, you said Cain Velasquez um, and obviously DC as well, but Cain Velasquez and Khabib. You know, you hear stories. You know, you were just saying yesterday about the stories you hear about Khabib in the training room, right, George? You were just saying that yesterday. We hear a lot of people say that, right? And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to ask Coach Javier about that. But those guys that kind of stand out. And another one I was going to bring up to Javier, which I'm glad you guys brought, because I think it kind of curtails in what you guys want to bring up to Javier was uh, BJ Penn. Remember he the, the AKA got him to his first title fight uh, with Jens Pulver, Jens Pulver in that first kind of lightweight run. Right. And, uh, and that's a good that's a good call. We actually talked about that on the way in, and I wasn't sure if if any of the pen er or how much of the pen era he claimed to, and he did claim to making it to the Pulver fight, but obviously we knew the results. So yeah. once again, Dan, you're you going back into the ball pays <laughs> off because you I, not only do you watch the fight, you see who's in the corner and. I'm sure you can tell us who's who's on some of these banners as well. Although I think that was pre pre banners, right? It, it is pre banners, yeah. but, but you know, and it, 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 it ties in with the technique too. I mean, you hear a lot of guys talk about Khabib's technique, how he he'll tie guys' legs up and pin him against the fence. And the only other guy I saw do that was uh, B J Penn. Granted, it was to an AKA guy, John Fitch, but again, B B J Penn also uh, a, an AKA guy. The AKA can kind of lay claim to. And you see these guys using these techniques, and of course, the cost check and and Fitch obviously used a lot of similar techniques to you know mm -hmm. uh, isolate guys. And you, again, I think it speaks to a lot of not just the, the talent, but there's obviously there's coaches in there that's passing on this information, mm -hmm. making sure these guys are equipped going into their fights and, and, and so they can take it to their opponent. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll save a little bit of that talk when he walks in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He'll be in soon, and he'll be hanging with us for two hours. We're also going to talk to uh, uh, King Mo is going to be one of our guests. Now, is he one of the first or one of the last? One of the last. All right. All right. We'll also be talking to Carrie Melendez. Mm -hmm. uh, she got a win this past weekend at Bell Tour 206, and King Mo is slated to fight in Hawaii. If I'm not mistaken, that's Bell Tour 210. Um, Liam McGeary, his his opponent. So we'll, we'll we'll talk about them. We'll talk with Javier about this big fight because I mean it it is 
appropriately enough, uh, after the Melendez interview, I think we'll be done with uh, Bellator 206 coverage, and it'll be all UFC 229 going forward. Embedded's uh, have dropped, and and many of the fighters, if not all of them, are already in town, including the two main eventers. And it's serious business, man. This could be the highest-grossing pay-per-view. Uh, I'll be interested to see how it does at the gate. It's already a solid sellout with no resales available. So this bad boy is, is I mean, it's a monster. You know, there's no other way to put it. UFC 229 is a monster. Uh, all right. So let's bring in the coach. Or the goach. The goach. All right, we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to ask him point blank. No point blank. Point blank. We need to know. You can, yeah. You do have that flexibility. All right, joining us now uh, is the founder of American Kickboxing Academy in San Jose with their affiliate in uh, Thailand and coach, head coach to champions Daniel Cormier and Habib uh, Nurmagomedov, former champions Cain Velasquez, Frank Shamrock, and uh, Luke Rockhold. Uh, Javier Mendez, uh, also former world kickboxing champion. Welcome, sir. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on, you guys. Yeah, we really appreciate lower. You. Uh, there is that you better? go. Better. Yeah. Okay. Really appreciate you having uh, having you here on Fight Week. Um, I know it's a busy week for you, but I figured you know what those guys are all nocturnal. All that training stuff will happen in the afternoon. Let's pull the coach in here uh, to you know. Uh, even though we've had you on the show before, we've never had you in studio, and I figured we could maybe learn more about you and the team. Yeah. Uh, you know, you asked me to come on board here, and uh, you know. My gambling habit was telling me, no, I ain't coming. <laughs> but I kept getting my butt kicked, so I figured, shit, you know, <laughs> a couple hours here would be probably save me money. And it, it has. Keep you out of the machines? <laughs> it kept, not the, uh, crazy four. Crazy four. Freaking at Planet Hollywood. It whooped my butt really bad. And so, actually, this is, uh, this is nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not losing. So, we're saving you money. Yeah, no, you're saving me money. And, and, and that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm coming here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we were talking about uh, Goes. Oh, so this is Goes. Uh, his real name is Brian, but you can call Brian. him Goes, and that's Dan. Dan. All right. Uh, Dan the man. He was talking about, I was calling you coach. He was calling you Goach. Greatest yeah. of all time. I oh. don't know. I, I, I'll ask you point blank, but we've been calling you coach, but that feels disrespectful. When we look at what you've done, you may be Goach. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, it's flattered, I guess, but I, I'll take coach. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. You know, it's, uh -huh. I love what I do, and, and uh, I'm going to continue doing it. And um, Did we get that right? Five UFC world champions, depending on how uh, you can clarify Shamrock or not. If, you, if you're going by, by five individuals, but if you're going by actual uh, UFC titles, then if you're going by, like, like Kane lost it and he won it, Right. Yeah. No so individuals. Individuals. Then yeah, five five individuals. Yeah. yeah. And see, I don't think I can think of another one because, for example, American Top Team has had uh, Robbie, Joanna. Right. Well, they've they've had champion uh, oh. Amanda, but Ricardo Laborio was coaching for a while, and now it's become Mike Brown. So we'd have to separate and see well who was in whose corner. We'd have to look at Greg Jackson and see, you know, because he shared GSP. He did have John Jones. Uh, you know what I mean? And so when you decipher it, it, it's pretty clear. I've always seen you and Bob Cook for sure in the corners of the fellas that we just mentioned. Yeah, Bob Bob has been with me on everybody except Frank and, and, and uh, Habib. And Habib, okay. Yeah, yeah Bob has been That's with true. three. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And Bob's awesome. He, he I love that guy, man. Mm -hmm. he, he's he doesn't get enough credit, but he doesn't want the credit, you know. And I didn't either. But my wife made me do this, so mm -hmm. she said, you need to get your butt out there. I go, I don't want to do it. How come? Yeah, I, I'm kind of shy away from the attention. Yeah. You know, and I'm fine. As long as my guys are winning, I'm good. You know, uh, that's my number one priority is to but get But you want more winners, best. right? Oh, I, yeah, I'm not done. We have a lot of guys that we're still working on, you know. I always say it's, it's good to come out and do some media. I, I know some like to do a lot of media and others maybe some, but I think – there's young fighters that are listening and sizing you up and going, man, I, I heard him on Junkie Radio. And, I mean, I've seen what he's done, but, wow, I didn't know that about him. I like his personality. Maybe that's the gym I'm going to try and, and go visit when I'm done with my wrestling career or whatever. And, but but I, I think it's good for coaches to do media. And I also have said this for many years, at least five, seven, eight, when the money started getting good. I think you guys – I'd love to get you guys and referees on par with some of the other sports because you're so valuable. I mean, we hear the fighters talk about 
Hav kept me in the game. Jackson kept me, kept me in the game. Or the game, clan, game plan that we came up with, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's some value to that. We see that We see that in boxing. Some of them are very well paid, and I want the whole sport to grow together. Yeah. Financially. Yeah, yeah no. You're it, on board it, with it, that, it, right? It, it, I'm on board <laughs> with that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So we de- so that so I, I'm, I'm glad you can committed two hours. I gave the coach four options. Goes, I said, hey, listen, man, you can start with us, and then if you have to go, great, or or come in late, you know, blah blah blah. He texted me, or emailed me this morning. He goes, I'm in for two hours. I, I was love it. so fired up. I was <laughs> like, cool, we can. <laughs> we have so many. Find questions. out a, a, about the journey. Yeah. Yeah. And like have I a s- seat, coach. <laughs> you're right. Have a seat. Well, like I said, thank crazy four for that. My luck there because if my luck was going good i probably would have never gave you any of it <laughs> <laughs> but i'm getting my ass beat and i said okay i can continue to drop more or i can take a oh that was early this morning yes that's oh, what wow. i was saying have I you was, gone to bed since last night no i went to bed oh, but, okay. but, but you know I, I actually uh this is the best i've ever done going to bed early so you w- most people wake up and have eggs and toast and coffee uh, you just dart for the machines uh, or, no, or the, no. the table Cra- it's called crazy four yeah it's, 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 it's like a three card poker game and I, i'm addicted to that game and everybody that knows me the, all the dealers know me because that's all i do you know and they go you here to lose again yeah, <laughs> wow. but I'm we, having fun. We got intro- I got to show you that machine that I was talking about earlier. The machine that you butt on. Yeah, I'll show yeah. you where that's out earlier. Yeah. Well, I don't want to take try your look at a hundred bucks yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Picture on it at this point, right? Maybe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let, let's start from the beginning. Um, when did you know that you know American Kickboxing Academy? When, when you felt like you had the formula where you could be successful and you were doing it right. Hey, you come here and we can create some champions. Because Goz made a good point earlier. A lot of these champions are homegrown. You know what I mean? And that's another thing that, that makes it impressive, the run that you guys have had. Yeah, I don't think – nah, you know what? I don't think there's anybody that's done homegrown. Uh, uh, you know, we've had three home homegrown. Habib's right. not homegrown, right? Um, but I've had t- Habib since 2012. But uh, you know, Kane, DC, and Luke Rockhold were homegrown mm-hmm. right from the, their very first fight. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't really follow records or stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the, yeah. But in the late 90s, early 2000s, did, did, were you still figuring out the recipe, or did you think you were already, you could already? take over the game and, and, and have success like you have? You know, I, I never looked at it like that. I just look at what I love to do, you know, and, and I always look at a fighter individually and I try to get them to be the best they can be, you know, whether that be, you know, making pro or, or becoming a world champion doesn't matter. I just try to work on them and their mind, you know, to get them strong, to believe in themselves, to, to reach their full potential, you know, and uh, if it means a world title, great. If it means – you know, like I said, just becoming a professional or making TV, uh, and then I feel good because we've done the best we can with mm-hmm. them. Wrestling and hard training, uh, you know, those been those have been huge components of AKA. When we hear when we hear about AKA, hey, those guys go hard up there. They train really hard. A lot of gyms go seventy percent, seventy five percent. We hear you guys go really hard, ninety percent. But that's I mean, again, it's hard to argue with the success. And, again, a lot of wrestlers have come through there and developed their hands, and they've just become machines. Is is that how you wanted to lay the foundation, even though you came from a, a kickboxing world? Well, you, you know, I came from a kickboxing world, and, uh, I, you know, I, I took what I did from what I learned from my uh, uh, my coach, Pops Carvalho, who's, who's passed away about a year or so ago. And uh, it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We, we'd spar if we had a fight, if we had a fight. And I used that same that same formula that he did with with me and all the other guys, and uh, we just kept it. The only difference that I'm doing now, when uh, uh, Dana comes out with that the caveman, they you know okay, they, oh, he's getting hurt. Which you know, he was picking on us because it was a particular you know uh, sequences that happened where fights were being pulled out but everybody has the injuries yeah. but he was picking on us rightfully so at that particular time and even before he, he started picking us i was trying to think why the hell are we getting injured and you know i i've been working on trying to better it all the time and, and i have a great formula now what i do and i talk to my guys all the time i say look listen you guys i need to know from you guys if there's an injury if there's I don't want to spar today, if if I had a bad night with my girl, you know, I had bad night's sleep, I need to hear. Because if you guys do not tell me these things, then that's when I notice things go bad. Well, ever since we've done that, 
fifty uh, percent uh, less injuries. Mm, amazing. You know, I mean, we've been making simple communication. Simple communications because th- if your mind's not ready to engage in combat, and you're being put in there, and the other person's mind's ready to uh, engage in combat, guess what? You're at a little disadvantage. Right. Or if you didn't get enough sleep or anything like that, or if you're agitated because you got in a fight with your girl, or your parents it, it does affect your mind you know and since we've been doing that it's been working out great i'll give you a great example of the talk and how if you don't listen it doesn't work i had one individual that never got to spar habib ever and i'm looking at the lineup and i see this kid and he's very talented he's like andre filo he's with uh, hard knocks he's with Hen- henry hoof kid is phenomenal the kid is he's a great kid and i said andre you want to spar with, with habib he goes yes you know, was very happy, and I'm like, okay. Well, they sparred the very first sequence. Habib picked him up and put him down, but it wasn't like a hard takedown. But he put him down, shoulder. You know, uh, snap, snapped his shoulder. I popped something in the back of his shoulder. I'm like, it wasn't even a hard takedown. It was just. But regardless, it happened. And then he goes, Coach, I feel stupid. I go, I should have listened to you. I didn't want to spar today. But I thought you'd never, ever let me spar him again, mm. and I wanted to spar him. I go, you, I go, don't ever do that again, you know. I, I don't want to, you know, don't do that to me. So that was the big learning experience that these guys are learning. So, yeah. so now when we go through the gym and I say, hey, you want to spar? They say, no. Okay, good. Don't. I don't want anybody to spar if they don't want to. And, and if they have a slight injury, then I usually take them out. You know, sometimes my guys will go, uh, no, and they go, no, no, I want to spar. I go, no, no, get out of here. Too late. You know You know who I think gave me the best explanation for why they subscribe to the AKA culture of, of sparring hard? And I know you guys have taken your foot off, off the gas a little bit since then, but it was Daniel Cormier. And I think it was when he faced Anderson Silva. And what he said was, he trains so hard, they push each other so hard that by the time they get to their fights, they're so mentally wired that there's nothing that the guy across from you can do because you're so prepared uh, and, and your body and your mind is ready to perform that you're going to go out there and perform. Except that camp, I think he took, I think he was coming off an injury or something like that. And so he, uh, it wasn't as intensive a camp. And he said all week he was just more... Um, fidgety and anxious and he says that's not like me usually i'm prepared and we've gone as hard as possible but i think it was around the time of when dana said what he said and maybe you guys started to tweak things and he said he took his foot off the gas now luckily he still won he said but i just didn't ever want to have that feeling again so he still tries to push himself as hard as he can and i go okay i really really get that explanation now a lot of it just had to go with the mental side of things confidence yeah well daniel daniel uh uh, is number one for (laughs) <laughs> screw that <laughs> i'm sparring monday wednesday friday yeah no i'm sparring and and, and i i said okay so he sticks to the old formula he, uh not everybody else does he does habib does too mm-hmm. habib he, he, he i tell habib you don't have to spar to go no no coach I, i'm sparring i'm sparring i go well you're you know if it's 100 percent I see everything. I say, I'm, you know, I put my foot down. I put my foot down. But in a case like this, I let them decide. And and uh, Habib and Daniel have always, always want to spar, mm-hmm. always. And look who we're talking about. Arguably one of the greatest of all time, and a current undefeated fighter. You don't find many of those undefeated fighters, you know. So there you have it. Yeah, uh, you know, I think a lot of it is just being blessed to have, uh, you know, uh, talented people like, uh, you know, uh, with Crazy Bob Cook and Dwayne Zinkin, you know, being on board with me. That was the the, the relationship that's brought Cain Velasquez, you know, Daniel Cormier over. So, you know, Dwayne Zinkin is, is a big uh, part that doesn't get the credit because he's not out there. But Dwayne Zinkin is a big, huge part of, of AKA's success, you know, and uh, and just need to let that know because a lot of people don't know that Dwayne Zinkin is, is a big part of, of our success. You know, uh, he recruits uh, uh, top level wrestlers because they come from a wrestling community. And, uh, you know, not, not many people know that he's a big, big, big part of it, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, he doesn't get enough credit. Mm-hmm. What would you say is the biggest difference between some of the old guard fighters and the newer athletes? Is there much? 
There's a huge, yeah, yeah, because uh, 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 the old time guys are still blood and guts, and, and the new guys are on to the smarter training, you know. And, and uh, you know, like I said, you know, <laughs> hey, I don't feel good, I don't get good sleep, you know. Instead of barbaric type thing, like I wanna, you know, I gotta give you an example. Uh, I won't say names, but uh, I had one particular fighter. There's a well-known fighter, and uh, I said, um, "Hey, man," I go, "You know, I hope that if you learn anything from me." that you don't get hit because you know the moves and I don't understand why you la allow yourself to get hit all the damn time. I go, you, you, you're you really good and you don't need that to happen. Well, four years later, he goes, <laughs> he goes hey, you remember when you said, I go, yeah. He goes, well, I never told you, but but th this is why I, I allow people to hit me because I want to prove how tough I am and I could take it. I go, you know what? I go, out of everything everybody's ever told me, that's got to be the stupidest goddamn thing I've ever heard in my whole entire life. Mm -hmm. Why would you allow someone to hit you if you, if they, look, they should have to make that hit and you couldn't do nothing about it. But you let them hit you because you want to prove how tough you are? I go, that's the stupidest comment. You proved to me how stupid you are. Mm -hmm. I go, don't you ever let anybody hit you. They have to earn it. You know, this is the game of hit and not get hit. Don't with four ounce tough, gloves, yeah. yeah. It's unforgiving. The tough guys, the tough guys aren't the guys that get hit. The tough guys are the guys that don't get hit. You know, I, with Kane Velasquez when he first started coming to us, you know, Kane was like a magnet. You throw a punch, close your eye, throw a punch, and you land it on on Kane's chin, <laughs> guaranteed. You know, and but Kane was such a beast when he first started coming with us. He would mow people down. Because you hit him and you get tired of hitting him, you know, like Paul Bonatello and him went at it. And Paul kept hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting. Kane keeps coming. All of a sudden, second round, Kane, Paul's so tired of punching Kane, like three to one, right? Paul hit Kane three times. Kane hit him one time. Paul got so damn tired, he just sat like this. And I'm just like, oh my God. From that point, of course, obviously, he's, Kane's very green, right? So we're working on defense now. You try hitting Kane clean. Mm -hmm. Good luck. He's so well polished. That he's so skilled. It, it's it's um, it's scary how good that guy is. It really is scary, in my opinion. And unfortunately, because of things that have happened in the past, but to me, he's the greatest heavyweight of all time, in my opinion. He just hasn't the injury factor in, you know. Uh, maybe Can you update us on him? Where does he stand? He's now? been training. He's been in the gym. He's been training since the new year. So you, you see a healthy heavyweight? I see a healthy guy, and, and, and I see a guy that wants to fight. It's just a matter of the business end of it, you know, and that's it, you know. And I see a guy that can, in my opinion, you know, can still dominate uh, the, the, the division if he wants, you know. But we'll see what happens, right? I mean, Do you I, feel like something's close? In your last conversations with him, like we don't even talk about it. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I made boo boos in my past, so they leave me out of all that stuff. So I don't get to know anything about him other than I love him to death. He's like my family, you know. But business wise, I, I'm in the outside, and I have been in the outside for years. The one now. thing the fighters don't have is time. You know, you can hold out for a certain amount of time, but the sport just continues, and you can never get. You know, if you're 33, you can never get 31 and 32 back. If you're 36, you can never get 33 and 34 back. And, man, it's been almost about two and a half years, if I'm not mistaken. And I'll tell you what, he looked great against Travis Brown. In his last fight, he looked amazing. If Kane's healthy and ready to go, wow, I, I would hope UFC can figure it out or something. And Because uh, I'd love to see him back. Dude, I'm telling you, he's just – he's freaking unbelievable i mean he's he, like i said try hitting him now <laughs> he's so freaking good i've spent probably 10 good solid years on technique and working with him the mind and, and everything that he is i mean i watch him coach and i'm like in awe of him right i'm like mm -hmm. he is a freaking unbelievable coach man he kane is incredible you know i look i go wow you're good mm -hmm. and he's like what are you talking about? I go, you, you're freaking phenomenal. You could be a hell of a coach. He goes, well, I like coaching. I go, well, maybe you should join me. He goes, ah, I don't know. <laughs> but he's incredible. Yeah. He is incredible. You know what I thought of him the other day was um, the Modelo commercials, how they focus on Latinos. And we need more heroes, you know, in our community. And I thought, man, kane has been – I've been at Kane fights where the people – there's just as many outside waiting the arena for him to come out as there are inside. And that energy that he drives in the Mexican crowd. Chain, Kane and like, Brock was something I'll never that, forget yeah. oh, no, in yeah, Anaheim. Insane. 
Yeah, afterwards, it's like Mexico, when, if they were to win the World Cup, I mean, people were honking their horns and they were waving flags. Yeah. Uh, that was something else. Dan? Uh no, Dan, you haven't said anything. I don't want you to talk now. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to take. I don't, don't want to take it uh, kind of back a step and a half. But you were talking about you know Cain Velasquez and kind of older gym memories, and I'm almost reserved to ask about stuff with the gym. You know, I, I understand the, the the gym and martial arts culture, and you be selective of what you give out. But obviously, you know, you're giving out you know uh, the stories like with Buentello and and stuff like that. And uh, I was going to ask, you know, you hear a lot of. I don't want to say tall tales, but, you know, when it comes to the media or fans, it always gets us like the telephone game, right? Uh, but we hear all these stories about Khabib in the gym. Uh, everybody knows how great he is. Obviously, he's under defeated record. We, we know what's on paper. Right. But we all hear these stories about how, how, how great he is in the gym. He takes these, these guys are much bigger than him and this and that. Is there any things that you've heard that you, you were like, oh, that's not, that, that's not true or things that maybe we would be surprised to find out are true about maybe Khabib in, in, in the gym and how he handles himself? Well, you know, um, since 2012 – I don't let him spar someone that's that's way above him in weight. I put somebody within his weight. So he's never sparred all out with Luke Rockhold. No fucking way would I do that. Luke's Luke's right. too big. Or Daniel Cormier. He spars at the most welterweights. That's about the heaviest I'll let him go. But I don't go let him go with any any middleweight. Um, Habib in since 2012, he's lost a round here and there, but he's never lost a sparring session ever, ever. Wow. So whoever he spars, you, you might have got him that round, but he's going to dominate you, and he will dominate you. He dominates everybody. And why I'm so confident in him? Because what I see in the gym. This guy he dominates everybody. I've never seen him in all the years. I've seen him in, in, in trouble. Uh, actually, the first time ever that i personally seen it, he was in trouble with one of uh, this new uh, uh, standout we have called Kyle Crutchmer. He's from from Oklahoma. Mm. Uh, he's a cowboy, you know, with DC yeah, wrestled. Yeah. He's, a, he's a you know he's a blue chipper for us. Yeah. He's three and zero now. Kyle Kyle's an up and coming prospect. That, you know, he, you're gonna hear some good things about him. He had Habib in a chokehold that I thought, oh crap, he's done. Wow, I'm gonna see history here. I've never seen him tap. I'm going, holy shit! And all of a sudden, it's just like, no, it ain't gonna happen. It wasn't going to happen. It's like he knew how to fight, when to fight, like a freaking ninja master. And I'm like, oh, my God, this ain't going to happen. I knew it wasn't going to happen, and it didn't. Kyle was like, Hob, I had that thing. I had it. I don't know. How the hell got to go? Yeah, I know. That's what kind of person he is. Yeah. He won't quit. And I said, Habib, have you ever tapped? He goes, no. No one's ever made me tap. I went, no, I believe it. And then Luke Rockhold was the second one that, 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 that almost had him. And he told me, he goes, who's always? He goes, Luke almost got me, coach. He goes, Luke went from one move to another move, and they were both like bad, but they didn't get him. Wow. You know, he, he's he, everything you hear about him, 100% true. The thing that, that, uh, the thing that people knock on him, and I'll say it over and over and over again, he's evolving all the time. So it isn't like he's a polished striker. He's not. He's not. He's, you know. He used to come with me just one month out before fight camp. It wasn't until the last four that he's coming two months out. So I never got to work with him enough time to improve because we got to fight. Mm -hmm. So we don't have enough time to prepare. He's been coming more. So if you guys are watching his striking, you notice a vast improvement. Mm -hmm. And guess what? This fight coming around, even though the whole game plan, everybody knows it's not stupid. Connor's so goddamn good and he's great. Why would we want to stand with Connor? We're not. But we're going to have to stand with him because if we don't stand with Connor, how are we going to take him down? Just shoot for the takedown? Good luck just doing that. You know, you're going to take too much damage. So with Habib, he's gotten so goddamn good now. Yeah, you got to watch out for his striking because he's, he's getting his precision striking is better. His chin has dropped down more because his chin was up high. And I mean, like I said, he like he makes a lot of uh, of things that, that a beginner makes, but he's getting – better and better and better because he's a great athlete and he's got a great mind and, and he learns really well so uh, that's why you'll see improvement in him all the time he's always evolving all right we got to jump in for a break yeah. let's do this let's take a quick commercial you're listening to mma junkie radio on fight nation channel 93 stay close and we'll be right back remember we have two other guests today we have uh carrie ann melendez who got a win at bell tour 206 and king mo he'll be ma making his return to junkie radio we're joined by javier mendez the coach of american kickboxing academy in san jose he's hanging with us here for a couple hours on today's show so hopefully you enjoy that and don't forget he'll be in the corner of the world champion uh habib Nurmagomedov as he defends his belt his lightweight belt at ufc 229 on saturday 
versus Conor McGregor. Stay close. We'll be right back. Compassion. Common sense. These guys have none of that. You listen to them, so you're no better. I am awesome, though. They are gorgeous, George and Goes. Get the radio channel numbers and a link to listen to your favorite NFL, college football, or National Hockey League team sent straight to your smart device. Just go to SiriusXM.com slash sports today and click add to my calendar. Hey, coach, who's your favorite team? 49ers or the Raiders? I don't have one. You don't have one? No. But you, don't like, you, know, you don't like the NFL? You know, I used to be uh, every sport, but, man, there's so much going on in our sport that, yeah. that um, man, I lost the taste for all of it. Okay. Yeah, that's an honest yeah. answer, you know. At least you didn't force it and just throw out some, some no. team that you've never nah, haven't seen I, I, you in know, the last 20 years or nothing. I've been to football that's games. That's how I feel about baseball a little bit. I just I can't get into it like I used to, um, but uh, there's just not enough time. Yeah. 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 All right. All right, we have another guest here. We're going to be talking to her for just a couple minutes here. Uh, she got a win this past Saturday at Bellator 206. She defeated Dakota Zimmerman and got a split decision win. Uh, it was featured on the main card, and she joins us now on the hotline. Carrie Ann Melendez, how are you? Hi, very well. All right, welcome back to MMA Junkie Radio. You're on with George Goes and Dan, and we also have our special co-host for the day, uh, Javier Mendez from AKA. Congratulations on your win this past Saturday. Uh, got a lot of work in there, you know, 15 minutes, a lot of experience. Dakota definitely was game. I think I think uh, e even though you've been mowing through people as of late, I, I still think this is one of those valuable uh, learning lesson type of wins because of all the experience you gained and how much you were tested. So yes, definitely. She definitely came with a game plan, and um, I was happy that it went all three rounds um, for exactly what you said, for the experience. When did you know, wait a minute, uh, this isn't going to be like the other ones. I got, I got my hands full here. And how did you ground yourself? Uh, was it 
you know, in between rounds with, with the assist from, uh, you know, Gilbert, you know, talking you through it? Or were you, were you already anticipating something like this? Or have you been anticipating something like this throughout your career? I have been anticipating this every fight. I don't, um, you know, I've been waiting for someone to come out and do this, especially because I'm known as a striker. Mm -hmm. But this camp has been, oh, my goodness. It wasn't the, I just had a lot going on this camp. So just going into this fight, I'm just glad I, w I, I made it fight day because mm -hmm. I just had a lot going on for me. You stayed undefeated. You're now 3-0. and uh, and, and again, uh you know, this card was interesting because we had a lot of experience at the top. We had the champ champ fights, but I was really, really focusing on Gaston Bolanos, yourself, and Aaron Pico. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just wondered to myself, am I watching um, future champions here? Uh, and, and I've seen, you know, now covering the sport for so long, I've seen these fights and how valuable they are. Sometimes it takes a loss, carry to shake things up, you know what I mean? And this one was close to one, but it wasn't one. So I... You know, I, I think it was just a perfect ending uh, all the way around. Yes, I I, I agree. Like um, uh, I like I said, like I just have to bring up that I had some some issues in camp, and my my striking coach of like ten years left in the middle of camp, kind of left our gym in a distasteful way, and oh it, boy. it almost turned me off, and 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 it kind of uh, like I. It, it almost made me not want to fight and do it anymore. <laughs> like, I almost wanted to pull out of the fight because it was just just a crazy thing going on with me. And um, it really affected me, like, mentally and emotionally. And, I, like I said, I almost thought I didn't want to do it. And about <laughs> to, to get, uh, you know, I was in I was in a deep, deep arm bar. And then I was like, oh, man, I can't go out like this. I do want to be here and I do want to do this. And I was even willing to let my arm snap, <laughs> and and it and it took this fight and and everything that went on to realize how much that I do love this and and that I am here and uh, and I appreciate Dakota for coming out and uh, being being game. Yeah, for sure. All right, goes. What do you have for Carrie Ann Melendez? Carrie, aside from the turmoil that that would cause a fighter having a coach leave in the middle, um, you guys are also gym owners, and this is somebody who coached at, at your gym as well. Um, how how difficult is it sometimes to separate the stresses that come from being gym owners and the stresses that come from being fighters? Because of the special situation, it, it, it was just really stressful. I mean, I'm lucky that, that Gilbert, he kept his head on straight and, and, and um, took care of a lot of things and just reassured everything would be fine and we have a lot of support. But it was... Um, it, it was difficult to on the business aspect, and luckily we had other instructors step up, and um, we have a good team around us. So, you know, I feel lucky and blessed that we we're really supported when something big like that happened, and our and our business is fine. I remember when your fight was announced. I had to double take and look at it again because I thought she just fought. Like this must have happened. Yeah, the we next were there. We were there at Temecula. Yeah, I couldn't believe how quickly you took that that next fight. Um, does that mean that you're you're pretty much? Do you think maybe uh, this will do it for this year, or do you feel like you can maybe even take one more before the year, the year's up? I think I could take one more um, before the year's up. I'm not gunning for it, but if you know if Bellator Hawaii gives me a call, then ah. I would love to go to Hawaii. <laughs> Um, but I don't know if I'm going to be calling them and asking. <laughs> mm, all right, all right, Dan Tom, our fight analyst. Uh, what do you have for Carrie Ann Melendez? Hey, Carrie. Uh, I know I saw uh, Leslie Smith in your corner. I know you guys are our friends, and she was also, you know, your corner woman for the night. Could you just maybe touch a little bit on that relationship? And as well as I saw a post on your Instagram uh, saying to get this girl in, in Bellator, and I know Leslie's definitely been a part of some of my favorite female fights in MMA. Have you heard any news on that front? Um, yes, I, I believe Scott is interested in signing Leslie Smith. Um, you know, I'm not her manager, so I'm not going to, um, I don't know details on, on hopefully they can sit down and, ha and have a meeting, but she is, yes, she is just an amazing fighter and deserves to have her skills shown across the world. Like she's, we're missing her in the sport. So I really wanted to get that out there. And she's also a, a wonderful corner woman. When I was, um, you know, in a little trouble, I, I heard her yelling, you know, great directions and, and she's just great for the sport. So I hope that. Scott does um, have a meeting with her and a sit down and, and get her on board. I think we would 
be repping the Bay Area together, just like, you know, Nick and Gilbert and Jake and, you know, Leslie and I can do it for Bellator. How soon do you even want to get into whole, the whole, you know, world champ talk and things like that? Do you feel like there's still, like, a lot of improvement to make? Uh, or, or would you like to fast track this, you know, your career? Because I know you're, like, like Go said, a gym owner, a mother. You know, you're 34 years old, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't know how long you even want to be a professional athlete. Right. I, I think, um, you know, I have two more fights left on this Bellator contract, mm-hmm. and I'm hoping that Scott just opens up the 115 division in Bellator, mm-hmm. or else I need to rethink things. But the only way I would move up to 125 is for the title, mm-hmm. because there's no, I'm a little too small for 125, but... Um, so in that case, like if they do want to offer me that, I, I would take that. And but I'm not I'm not in a rush. I, I just want to keep fighting and, and get the respect and, and enjoy enjoy this fight journey. Well, the respect's there. I think you're an awesome fighter. Uh, and even the announcers, <laughs> all of them, the hosts and the uh, play-by-play and color commentators, the so Big John, Morrow, everybody was just saying, "Hey, watch this," you know. And even though it was a tough go. In the end, you pulled out the win, but everybody's just excited because uh, we j- we haven't seen that many female athletes with your kind of power at 115 pounds. So a- at any second, you can end it, and that's what makes it very compelling. Oh, thank you. Yes, and and and, I, and I'm excited. To, not excited, but I'm looking forward to seeing Dakota fight again to show that she is a good wrestler and a good grappler, and and to so people can see that yeah it was it was difficult because she was oh and oh but i'm like this girl does, is good at grappling mm-hmm. you know and i was ready for it and and she did surprise me on just her vice grip and, and her game plan yeah i was like wow I, I wasn't really expecting someone to stick on or hold on or jump hard <laughs> like that <laughs> big time man she <laughs> made it tough she almost twisted up that arm but you were game and you got the win carrie it's great to catch up with you Thank you for the time. Congrats on the big win at Bellator 206. We look forward to your next fight booking. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for having me. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, Coach, we talked about this, but maybe you can give an official answer. We just don't see female athletes come out of AKA. Uh, is that something where the ladies haven't really come to the gym? or The the ladies just don't come to the gym. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Jermaine no. Durand to me for a little bit, right? Yeah, Jermaine was with us for a little while, but uh, she she went back home. Mm-hmm. You know, um, she's great. You know, but uh, yeah, 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 she was with us. All right, yeah. all right, cool. Well, the coach is here uh, for the show, so we got many more questions to go. But let's get this last break out of the first hour. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 93. Stay close. We'll be right back.
and uh, yeah, three, three, the three that I know of. I get paid to say things in this cool voice, and they get paid to be lame. Here are gorgeous George and Goes. You can hear fantasy football advice and information to help you win all day on Fantasy Sports Radio, including which free agent players you need to add to your team during the waiver hour. Waiver Wire Hour, excuse me, hosted by Football Diehards at 7 Eastern on Sirius 210 XM 87. If you missed the live show, you can hear replay tonight at 10 Eastern on Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88. We're joined in studio by Javier Mendez, former world kickboxing champion and also head coach to Habib Nurmagomedov, who defends his UFC lightweight title versus Conor McGregor. Also has coached uh, Daniel Cormier, Frank Shamrock, uh, Cain Velasquez, and Luke Rockhold to these same great heights. And let's not stop there. There's been some strike force uh, titles that we talked about earlier. Again, Luke Rockhold uh, was their, their middleweight champion. Uh, Josh Thompson, you've had plenty of regional belts. Altogether, how many world champions do you think you've had if you combine UFC, Strike Force, Belt, or One Championship, PFL? You know, all, all the ones that are considered, I guess, major sports leagues or probably MMA sports the leagues. The major sport, probably 19 or 19 20. 19 or 20. Yeah. Oh, that's impressive, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. All of them, uh, are they all, like, special in their own way or – does it always circle back to the UFC? Is that just like a different animal? Uh, to me, they're all they're all, they're all. Well, think about this, okay? Uh, Luke Rockhold was the 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 Strike Force World Champion. He's the UFC World Champion, so he was special. Uh, Daniel Cormier, you know, actually the same thing. He won the Grand Prix in, in, in the Strike Force, and look where he's at. He's yeah. the freaking goat right now. So uh, these guys, Josh Thompson, you know, uh, was another one that was that, you know, hard worker and. Uh, was special in the sense that he worked hard and, and, and he kept, you know, sticking the grindstone. But the the guy that, that for me that I'm the most proud of for accomplishing something because is the guy that I helped the least and got help from the least from anybody, John Fitch. Mm. John Fitch, uh, uh, you know, that guy. He won the WSOF yeah, title. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, you know, he he'd never let anything stop him from being successful. So... You don't have to be the most talented. You, you don't have to be the most marketable. You just have to have, you know, the grinding attitude and the never quit like John Fitch does. I Is mean, he back with you now in San Jose? Yeah. Because he was in he, Vegas for a while. Yeah, he was in Vegas. Uh, he's been back with us for over a year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, he, uh, he trained with us with the, the Paul Daly fight. And prior, uh, we had, during the commercial, we talked, but I thought it was an interesting story. So we talked about Cormier, Grand Prix. We circled back to Don Fry. I'll, I'll spare the audience. It was just the chit chat but you actually said you were at uh one of the ultimate ultimates in 1995 was that your first mma event my first experience was the ultimate ultimate with uh myself and brian johnston uh -huh. and I remember uh, him, a friend of mine uh, todd milan yeah, the american flag uh, yeah uh, tights, yep, right yeah. yep 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 and uh, that was it's my tough. first experience mm -hmm. where where you know i was watching everybody in the back you know and i'm watching dan severn work out and man i said uh, this guy's ahead of everybody. He was a, he was doing a little bit more than everybody else. Everybody was sticking to a certain thing, but he he was he was doing a little bit more. And I said, this guy's be a little bit more well rounded than all the rest. I thought I thought, mm -hmm. you know. And he steamrolled everybody that day. Mm -hmm. Steamrolled everybody. Yeah. You know, very impressive. Did you think back then that the sport could be what it is now? Um, I never thought about it. I never thought about what the sport could be. You know, I just, you know, I had a, I had Brian Johnston, who was my first actual first UFC fighter, and uh, uh, it's through Brian Johnston that actually, if you think about it, is he's the reason why I'm here. Wow. You know, he he wanted to get in it, and I knew Art Davy. You know, so I said, hey, Art, I got uh, I got this kid that that's a Golden Glove, uh, not you know, Golden Glove champion, and uh, you know, a little bit of judo wrestler and. You know, and he had the look, you know, so he, he got in on it based on that. It was not based on anything more than just size and, and looks back then. If you're like Paul Varnas, come on, he's six foot seven, six foot eight, yeah. 325 pounds. Polar pound guy. bear, what'd you call him? Goes trap it fighter. Was a trap huh? fighter. That was trap what fighter. was listed under his stuff. <laughs> yeah, remember that? Yeah. Uh, you know, at AKA, you only have so much mat space. And I have to imagine that a lot of fighters grow up with their dream being to train at a place like that. How long before you can figure out whether or not this person is worthy of being a part of the team? Well, you know, what we do is because it's so expensive uh, for an individual to come uproot himself, live in San Jose. That's why we don't get a cream of the crop. We don't get cream of the crop choices because of that reason. It's very difficult. You know, um, what we do is 
I allow just about anybody to train with the team if they have some kind of knowledge, if they have some kind of – not even the greatest potential to be the best they can be as far as, like, you know, being a challenge for Kane or be a challenge for Habib. Just – if they have the desire, I don't want to. I don't want to break anybody's dream of, of trying to do this. So what I would do, they can try out for the team. If they don't make the team, and and they seem to click well with the whole team, then I'll let them train with the team. But they can't be on the team. But they can still share the mat space, mm. you know. And then at some point, you know, they'll make the team. Like uh, one individual that's actually uh, uh, tried out for the team didn't make it, and uh, uh, you know, uh, it, you know, I call him Suave, you know, and. Uh, uh, you know, and Nolan Hernandez, Suave, Nolan uh, Suave, Fern- uh, you know, Hernandez, he tried out for the team, didn't make it, didn't deter him. He stayed in the gym, stayed, you know, hungry. Then he came back on board, tried out for the team. He did well, and now he's doing really well in, in, in uh, the 135-pound division. You know, he's doing really, really well, you know, and, uh, you know, he, he he's, he's knocking on, on a big show right now, you know. Very um, cool. He just fought in the LFA. Mm-hmm. And uh, he won his, his, his fight there. And uh, Nolan Hernandez is one of the individuals that I'm proud of because uh, he didn't quit. He, he keeps taking a bump here and there, but he just stays, keeps on trucking, you know. And uh, I love it. You know, all um, right. Very impressive. All right. This will only be a one minute break. That's right. We'll be back in 60 seconds. On the way out, I do want to give uh, my deepest condolences to my buddies, Hugo and Luis Lopez. They lost their grandfather, Federico Lopez, from Michoacan, Mexico. Stay strong, brothers. We'll be right back. All right, here we go. It's the second hour of the MMA Junkie Radio Show. We're joined by Javier Mendez from American Kickboxing uh, in San Jose. He's their head coach, also the founder of the gym. He'll be in the corner of Habib Nurmagomedov, excuse me, as he defends his UFC lightweight title versus Conor McGregor. Coach, you said it, and you were very honest. Appreciate the honesty. If you stand for five rounds, this isn't going to go Habib's way. I mean, you gave respect to Conor's skills, even though Habib has, incru- has improved his, his stand-up. Uh, his bread and butter is wrestling and then the vicious ground and pound that he has, you know, is just his overall grappling game, uh, his cardio. And a lot of people listen to these interviews, you know what I mean? And we're in Vegas. And trust me, you hearing you saying that is making me feel a little bit better because on my staff picks, I picked Habib. He's never lost. He's been an active fighter. And I just feel like there's a few things going against Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor is a great fighter. Most popular fighter of all time. He's won titles in two weight classes. But at the end of the day, the sport moved on without him. He decided to come back after almost two years. And I'm sorry, I think he's just going up against the freight train. But I have said that if Habib is were to stand too long, man, I, I, I you know, I think connor has got a lot of pop, and he can it can be a very dangerous fight for Habib. How do you make sure? That everything you said and then, you know that I've said and I'm sure you've heard other people say that it stays up here with Habib. Is that like a little mini fight the whole time of a male, alpha male that goes out there and maybe does want to just put it on someone but they have to stick to the game plan? How do you reel them in but then how do you also let them loose? Okay, uh, the deal with, with, with Habib and, and all my guys, I tell them, 
you know, we have three plans. We have my plan, we have plan B, plan C. And I always say, I don't care what you do if you don't listen to me, if you don't follow the plan, as long as you're winning, as long as you're winning. But if you're not winning and you're not trying the plan, now that's wrong. So uh, Habib will follow the plan and not follow the plan. But guess what? When he's not following the plan, he's winning. Mm. So I can't look at him and go, what the hell are you doing? I told you to follow the plan. No, I said, as long as you're winning. <laughs> now, he scares me because mm -hmm. I don't like it, but Habib is Habib. You know, I can't stop the fighter from being the fighter. Mm -hmm. So what he will do in this fight, I obviously, I want him to, hey, I want to start on the ground. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's start on the ground. Let's just start on the ground. Let's just make it simple for right, me. Right, right. Hey, man, it, you, you're you're fighting to me who I, I think he's a great fighter. I love watching that guy fight. He's like a – to me, I consider that guy master, the way he suckers you in, the way he puts the bait out there. And then, I mean, he – to me, he is. That's the way I look at him, and, and that's legit. I look at him like a master. But I also have – another master mm -hmm. that I think is just a little bit more special than him. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens, but how do I keep him on tack? I don't because he's going to do what he wants to do. I just hope he listens to what I want <laughs> him to do. Yeah. I say I hope. That doesn't mean he will. Yeah. He may go out there and stand with him the whole time, and I'll be screaming my head off, probably pulling my hair off, going, what the? are you doing don't do this to me you know he might do that i don't know you know um the aliquinta fight i'll give you an example uh we didn't know what was going to go on okay i didn't focus on anybody because one minute we got this guy and then we got this guy then we got this guy then we got, i'm going oh okay so i didn't even want to look at any film finally at the end it was aliquinta and i went damn out of all the guys that we we're supposed to get stylistically aliquinta is the toughest match for us so i i never watched this stuff i finally watched this stuff and i said habib I go, Al's the toughest guy we could have picked for us. You know, um, he's not going to be hard for you to hit. I go, but please do not get comfortable hitting him because we don't want to go away deviate from the plan because this guy can take a shot and he can give a shot. Mm -hmm. So he may very well just let you hit him just so he can sucker you in to, to get a shot off. Mm -hmm. So I said, come in and follow father's plan, which is basically his father's trained him his whole life. Take him down, control him on the ground, do whatever you want to do there. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> Does that the first two rounds. Third round, he shoots in, misses. But he's a chain wrestler. He doesn't shoot one time and that's it. He continues to shoot. But he was getting used to punching him. So, and then he was hearing the Muhammad Ali, Boom Baye type stuff. So that was in his head. He's watching, he's watching <laughs> Muhammad Ali videos the whole time. So he's, now he's like thinking, oh, yeah. So he's out there jabbing the guy. His chin's up in the air. Boom, boom. But he's out striking him. And I'm like, after the third round, I said, Habib, don't do that to me. I go, go back to father's plan. Please go back to go. And didn't listen to me. Okay. Fourth round did the same thing. So I said, okay, it's obviously you're not going to listen to me. Can you do me a favor? Let's go to father's plan and your plan. He goes, okay, coach. So then you watch the, the fifth round. He does, he does his thing. Then he takes him down mm. because that's what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So in between all that, Joe Rogan's like, oh, look, there's a hole in his uh, what are you talking about? He shot one time. He did that the very first round. He shot one time on on, on, on Al and, and Al, you know, stuffed that takedown. Then it was the second one that he did that got him down. Habib will shoot in 10, 15 times or more around. Not a problem. So, again, following the game plan, I want him to follow the game plan. But Habib's his own man, and he's going to do what he wants. Mm -hmm. You've game planned for a lot of fighters in the sport, a lot of top fighters. Where does Conor McGregor stand amongst those fighters? having the game plan for him um on on a striking he's such a he's such a, a great precision crafty striker it, it, for me for me he's the greatest adversary on the striking uh element for me uh so he's he's the hardest puzzle to figure out on, on the stand-up we have it we have it figured out it's a matter of habib going out implementing the plan but he's the hardest to figure out because he's so goddamn good at it and he's so relaxed. Mm -hmm. he, he's, I look at, uh, I tell some people, you, you, you want to talk about relaxation, you want to talk about having the stand-up, look at Connor. Look at Connor. No, look, I praise Connor because he should be praised. He's great, you know, but you know what? 
when Habib goes in there with them, you're going to see another great one too, and, and, and slightly greater, you know, in my opinion, you know. But but you can't discount how great Conor is, and if you do that, it's a big mistake, you know. It's a big big mistake, and uh, trust me, I'm not sleeping on that man. He, he's a great fighter for a reason. He's where he's at for a reason. There's a reason why people love him, you know, because he's great. A chessboard has a lot of different pieces on it, okay, and a lot of people just feel like it's two that are going at it, but there's so many different pieces, and two of those pieces, you, John Kavanaugh. How often do you have to kind of look at other coaches' tendencies and figure out what you think they're going to do? And we often compare your guys' gyms. That's what fans do. Um, I know that you get along with a lot of coaches, but you know, is there how much do you have to put into that? And then there's a little street cred of, you know, maybe your record against certain coaches. Do you ever have that inside of you? Oh, <laughs> Uh, he, uh, uh, we we did with Greg Jackson because he used to whoop our ass all the time with GSP. <laughs> Bob and I would go, oh. God damn, Greg got us again, a son of a bitch. <laughs> so, but other than human that, it's just, right? just yeah. yeah, it was human nature. But Greg Jackson, <laughs> Greg Jackson is the only one we actually did that because he whooped us. He every time with GSP, he whooped us two times with Cos and once with Fitch, and and we were like. We just couldn't figure out that that GSP puzzle, you know. And uh, yeah, we did do that. Uh, it, as far as anything else, I don't have any rivalry with any coach. I think John Cavanaugh is an incredible coach. He's a good guy, you know. I don't have any personal feelings towards any coach because to me, I'm a coach. I'm not a fighter, you know. So uh, my trash talking is not going to be any trash talking. I'm going to talk specifics. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a, a particular fighter's strengths and what I think my guy can do. Obviously, I'm going to be favoring my guy, you know, because that's the way we do, right? Otherwise, why are we fighting somebody if I don't think my guy can win? It's be like, then why am I even training my guy if I don't think we have a chance? It's, it's stupid. So, obviously, I'm going to be pro my guy. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, as far as anything else, th th there's none, zero. You know, I have nothing but admiration for all these top coaches. And even the coaches that are looking to be top coaches, I, I, I have respect for all of them. In pro football, Joe Gibbs, he was the, the coach of the Washington Redskins, he used to say that every now and again when they would face rivals, he didn't know how it would happen, but he would lock eyes with the other team's coach at particular moments in games. And he said, I could tell what that guy was thinking based off of those looks. And sometimes it would drive me nuts, and sometimes it would give me power because I, I knew I had him. Uh, have you ever locked eyes with a coach, and have you ever had any of those type of moments? Never. Never? Never. I, what I do is... I I look at the fighter. I don't look at I, I don't look at the coaching, per se. I look at, at his strengths and I look at my guy's strengths and I look and see where we could take advantage of it. It's it's hundred percent people that don't understand chess, and uh, and they looking at MMA. It, it, they they relate to each other so well, so well. So you know, and I love playing chess. You know, I used to play all the time, and uh, of course I haven't played in twenty years or so, but. You know, I love the mind game, you know, and, and, and uh, okay, he's good here, but was he good here? You know, let me, let me use my rook over here. Let me use my bishop or, or my horse, you know. Let, let's see what we can do with, with these pieces while we still have the power player here, queen here, you know. And, mm -hmm. you know, pawns are used for a reason too, right? They yeah. set up traps, you know. And uh, um, that's the game that we're in, you know. It's a chess game, you know. And, 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 and I, that's why uh, my biggest strength with my guys is not, it's not not the pad holding. It's 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 the chess game. Mm -hmm. Let's take some calls. Sure. All right, eight six six five two 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 eight four six. If you want to follow these knuckleheads, we'll start off with Kevin in Chicago. What's up, Kevin? How you doing? What's up, guys? Uh, I got a couple questions for Javi. Um, so your gym has been filled with good wrestlers. I feel like most of your champions have come from wrestling backgrounds. Is there any champions that come from like boxing or kickboxing backgrounds? Uh, Luke Rockhold was, was not a wrestler. Uh, you know, he, he just basically... He was a surfer. He was just a surfer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Luke Rockhold, uh, yeah. Um, Kung Lee? Kung Lee. Kung, Kung Lee. Lee. Kung Lee was a high school wrestler. He was, uh, yeah. But you know what? It, 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 but he wasn't at the high level. He was just... Kung Lee was just a freaking phenom of an athlete. You yeah. know? Frank Shamrock, you know, wasn't a wrestler. Yeah. Uh, so, we, no, the reason why we're known for wrestling is because, you know, like I said earlier, Dwayne Zinken. Zinken. Yeah. Dwayne Zinken. So, if you're going to prop anybody for making AK powerful with wrestlers, Dwayne Zinken. Okay. I got another question for you. So, Kyle Kretschmer, I've been following his wrestling career, and he just had a big win this weekend, 3-0. and What is the straight-up wrestling matches between Khabib and Kyle look 
Uh, you know, with straight up wrestling, I mean, you know, Kyle, Kyle's a beast, you know, and it, it speaks for itself. Uh, Habib is not a, a collegiate type, like type wrestler. Habib's an MMA wrestler. Uh, when it comes to MMA wrestling and stuff, Habib's top notch. But when it comes to straight wrestling, you know, Kyle Crutchmer, uh, I, I watched Kyle Crutchmer go with Ed Ruth, uh, you know, when they, they come in and that, that was really fun, fun to watch two high elite level wrestlers. I mean, it's pretty fun. Um, Habib wrestles with anybody, can hang with anybody within his weight, so it's fun. But but you know, if you're asking me, you know, hey, the, you know, who wins on that match? It's like you know, uh, you know, well, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle will because he's he's the, he's the, he's the better wrestler. But in MMA, it's Habib all the way. There you go, Kevin. Thank you very much for the call. We're gonna move on to Dan in Oregon. What's up, Dan? How you doing? Dan in Oregon, you're up. What? Man, Javi, I got a question for you. I want to know, we, we got this amazing PFO playoff coming up, and these guys got to fight two times in one night. I can't wait for this type of shit. The tournaments are back. And how do you help a fighter prepare for that opposed to, like, a five-minute five, five minute round? And how, like, mentally it just seems way different. So what would you say about that, Javi? Back to you guys now. Thank you, Dan. Well, you know, we, we have Islam, uh, you know, Habib's uh, uh, training partner fighting in the PFL, actually, uh, the week after this one in L.A. And, uh, you know, it's basically stay healthy, stay smart, you know, because you, you can't go out there and, and risk it all. You just got to win and, and win with the least amount of damage uh, uh, you know, while you get that victory because you give it all in the first one and you throw this barn burner of a fight and, and, and all of a sudden now you're, you're, you're wounded and you got the other person that, you know, got in quick and out, you know. So now you're in a, you're in a deficit because you got a disadvantage. So uh, the number one thing I would want them to do is win safety, you know, safety first, uh, you know, uh, not a win at all costs because uh, that – that would be one of the things I would say only if you have to. If you're winning comfortably, keep it comfortable. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do one more. Oreo in Alberta, Canada. What's up, Oreo? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good, man. How about you? Uh, good. I feel bad because happy I'm an awesome coach, but I really don't have a question for him. Well, then uh, just I wish him good luck on Saturday. Uh, well, I'm a Connor fan. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, then tell him may the best man win. <laughs> oh, good. I was <laughs> uh, just wondering, have you guys heard about the uh, main event for 2.30 yet? Yes. Yeah. So the news just broke a few minutes ago, and I was going to say it after I punted your ass, which is coming up very soon. Uh, uh, Valentina Shashenko <laughs> will be facing Sejara Eubanks for the vacant flyweight title, according to Brad Akimoto from ESPN.com. Uh, so on November 3rd, they will be the main event. And I'm pulling up the card now, just so everybody kind of has an idea of what that card looks like. They didn't want to give Poye and Nate Diaz... Uh, top billing, so they're going with it looks like here. Um, Valentina Shashenko. So now the fight with Joanna at UFC 231 that gets undone, I guess. And Valentina moves up to fight Sajara Eubanks. And Sajara Eubanks also had a fight, I think it was going to be sometime in December. Anybody know who it was off the top of their head? Dan, no, no, no. who's okay. that? Sajara, Sajara Eubanks. Eubanks. I'm not sure. She no. was slated to fight. Oh uh, boy, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I'll, I'll find it. She's no longer fighting, so she's filling in versus Valentina Shashenko. <laughs> The rest of 2.30 looks as follows. David Branch versus Ronaldo Souza. Nate Diaz versus Dustin Poirier. Israel Adinsanya versus Derek Brunson. Some guy named Luke Rockhold versus Chris Weidman. Just joking, coach. Uh, Lyman Good versus Sultan Aliyev. Uh, Lando Venat is on the card. Brian Kelleher's on the card. And, you know, it from there on, obviously, uh, lesser-known fighters. Uh, all right, I'm... I wanted that five round with uh, Nate and Dustin. I was hoping they'd do the 165, but that sucks. All right. All right, All right buddy. Thanks, See ya. Hey, look, I'm hoping for 165, too. And sometimes I'll support a wacky decision, and that would have been a wacky one. But I feel like, I guess, if I mean, they were able to scr scramble and find a title fight. If we are going to have 165, I want to have the right guys. You know, they kind of deserve it. Nate's been off for more than two years. Uh, and I just don't think he would have been one of them. Poye, I probably could have stomached, but I think stomach. I think Poye just has such a bright future, you know, in the lightweight division. He should just continue doing his thing there. Uh, all right, coach. So now let me ask you something that I definitely don't want to run out of time. But I always ask every in studio guest: Can you share a good street fight story with us? I don't have one at all. I've never been Ever? in a street fight. 
No. Even when you were a kid? No. Even when you had the long hair? No. I was picking on you? No, like no. I, about the closest I got to a street fight, and it's not even a street fight, is I got punched Luke, uh, by DC. He hit me with the left hook. What the hell happened? Oh, you guys were sparring? No, I wasn't sparring with him. I was trying to break up a fight between him and Luke Rockhold. <laughs> Oh, Just well, got tough, nailed with can the you tell us that story, or is okay. that under the confines of No, no, I could tell you about it. Um, what what happened is, uh, he, you know, these guys love each other like brothers, but like brothers, they fight all the goddamn time. DC likes pressing buttons. Uh, DC is my favorite, but DC likes to press buttons. He likes to have fun. So we're doing the bike workout, and myself and Crazy Bob are in there, and DC likes to kind of slow down. He doesn't like the hard, and Luke knows that, so... They're jawing back and forth at each other because DC's kind of slowing down on the bike workout. So they're like getting agitated at each other. And, and, and what does Luke care how how fast DC? Because goes? it stops the you know it stops the momentum of, of the energy and momentum of the whole thing. But but oh, so, so you're talking about on individual bikes. individual bikes. Okay. So they're 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 jawing. I don't know what the hell's going on, but they're like you could tell that they weren't kind of comfortable with each other. And then all of a sudden, what ended up happening is. Freaking, they got off the bike and they went at each other. And Bob and I, like, oh shit. You know, I jumped in as I'm jumping in. Freaking DC's throwing the left hook. Mm-hmm. Boom! Nailed me right in the jaw. Crack. I'm like, well, what the hell happened? Didn't say nothing. Not a goddamn word. Didn't say nothing. We got him back on the bikes. They got back on the bikes. And then. Wait, did, we, did, did you Roddy Roddy Piper it straight down? No, or? I didn't feel it. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, I, I guess I have so a pretty still good, on your feet. I have pretty good jaw like that. Okay, okay. So he hit me square in the jaw. And going down the rounds, and all of a sudden, I'm holding the, the tie pads for, for DC for the work knees. I'm holding the tie pads. He knees me right in the freaking jaw. Boom, right in the jaw. And I'm like. It's the same day? Same day. That's like right the minute after. He hits me right with the right in the jaw. And he's so goddamn apologetic. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry, Coach. I'm, I'm like, dude, you meant to hit Luke with that left hook and you hit me. And you didn't apologize for that. But you did this on accident and you're apologizing to me. You got this thing all wrong. <laughs> you should apologize for that left hook, not that knee. Yeah. But that's it for me. I, hmm. No right, street I'll fights. Ta- I'll take that one. Now. Was this early on uh, when they just started to become friends, or was this they were already established as friends? No, this was like a year and a half ago. Wow. Luke told us once that uh, when he first got there, you know, we talked about the surfer thing, that he knew he needed to get some respect. So he said, he's, I seeked out the toughest guy in the room, which at that time, maybe it was that day, or, or maybe, no disrespect to Kane, but it happened to be D.C., he said he headed to D.C. and told him he wanted to spar, and they, he says they went hard at it. In fact, I think it was D.C. telling us the story. Uh, and that's how Luke got a lot of respect, especially from D.C., because he, w- he went and targeted the toughest guy. So when you were saying this, I was like, oh, I wonder if I was around the same time. But no. Okay. No, but that's so, still Luke, though. And they're close that's homies and still oh, went at it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Hey, we were in Mexico at one time, and, and – uh, they were jawing at each other back and forth, and I'm like, going, "Oh shit, they're gonna go at it, you know? <laughs> they're gonna go at it." So I'm already, I'm already telling myself, "Oh man, we're gonna got to jump in on this one." And it was, uh, I don't quite remember how it was, but it was regarding a bet: who would win between him and between both of you guys? What the odds would be? Who who would be the favorite? Yeah. You know, between both of them. And uh, so they were jawing back and forth, and and, and I was like, oh, "Here we go again." <laughs> about they have very Duke similar personalities. So uh, I, I could see uh, Luke. He's very, they're both very competitive. Oh my God, Luke! Luke, hey, Luke! Luke goes to the toughest guy in the in the room, and you know, on sparring day, you you can count on Luke to go to the very very toughest guy, and go, let's go. That's Luke. Mm. That's that is a hundred percent Luke. He, he's not he's not the guy that avoids the toughest guys. So he's going no. for Kane, DC. Uh, all yeah, of them. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh wow. yeah! Oh yeah! Except he won't go with Kane. In the cage, more than one round. One round's all. After that, he. <laughs> I, I gave you the funny story about Luke. Uh, Crazy Bob made him spar with Kane. I wasn't there, so I was I, not first hand. This is second hand. So I guess he went in there with Kane. He went one round, and then he wanted to go one more round. And Bob said, "No, get your butt in there." <laughs> Luke jumped out of the cage. He <laughs> <laughs> says, screw you. I'm jumping out of the cage. Like pro wrestling? When yeah, pro wrestling. They the cage to end the match. Yeah, Bob said it was the funniest thing because Luke said, I don't know. You know, because with Kane, like Luke could go with anybody, <laughs> anybody. You know, he's that freaking good. We all know how good he is, yeah. right? So 
with, with Kane, though, it's like the cardio. I mean, come on. Kane's cardio is just off the chain, you know. He, he's a natural thing. It isn't something he works for. He's just naturally – he keeps going and going and going. So, mm -hmm. you know, Luke's fine with Kane for one round, but then after one round, he's giving it everything he's got to keep that beast off of him. Yeah. Now what do you do? Yeah. You know, he's still that same guy, and you're just half of what you were. So that's why it looks like screw you. I'm wow. So these guys here. go at it. All right. Well, the oh, yeah. Well, the timeline he was saying about a year and a half ago, I'm doing the math, and I'm like, I, I want to say maybe DC was in camp for that fight, which makes me lead to my next question is, does DC get – is is that not a good time to mess with DC when he's in camp? Or, or maybe uh, – uh, again, you know, not to mention not, – not to bring up uh, bad names or anything, but if he's doing that to his buddy Luke Rockle, I could imagine, you know, if DC's in camp for somebody who wants to fight like a John Jones, like probably not the time to mess with him, right? Actually, no time's good to mess with No DC. time's good to mess with them? No, DC, DC is, is the greatest, but, you know, anybody mess with DC, DC, hey, do you want to bang? DC is all right. You challenge DC? Okay. Right. You know, I remember, I'll tell you, one, one thing I did uh, is I, I challenged uh, DC in a joke. I said, ah, I go, I go Kane's going to take you down. going to take you down. He goes, yeah, yeah, huh? I go, yep, taking you down. Oh, we'll see. It's a joke, though. It's not like real, real, but nope. You nope. don't like it, huh? No, no. He loves the challenge. No, him and Kane are like brothers and, and, and everything. But but as far as the challenge for DC, you challenge DC, the challenge, challenge accepted. He, he's very, uh, you know, he likes winning at everything, you know. And then and, and if you, you know, he, and he likes picking on people, too, in a fun way. But, but that's DC. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you play the role of coach, obviously, but you also kind of sometimes play the role of, of a father to some of these fighters. They've grown very attached to you. And he brought up a name, John Jones. I remember when we had Daniel in here, he's so competitive. We made him play Mike Tyson's punch out, and he guaranteed me he'd get all the way to the last guy to Mike Tyson. And he didn't make it. And he was so bummed out about it. It almost pissed him off like the whole day. After a fight like John Jones, how do you, how do you console a guy like Daniel Cormier? It's hard, you know. Uh, the last time, you know, he actually cried in the ring, you know, and everything, and, and it just made me cry, you know. And then uh, I just said, "Man, I go, I wish I had the balls to just let myself go out like that and let everybody see who I really am." And it hurt, you know. To be honest with you, after he did that, I think he gained more fans because people go, "Man, this guy's real. He's not." Because we, hey, we we're fighters. If we lose and stuff, we deep down want to cry. Hey, when I lost my very first fight, I held it outside like a man. Or at least we want to talk about a man. But what is a real man? Maybe a man is the man that actually does what DC does. Maybe that's the real man because he's not hiding. You know, so, but I'm crying like, like a mother when I'm by myself. But in front of people, I'm Mr. Cool, Calm, but not DC. Now, DC, this is who I am, you know, and, and that doesn't make him weak. I think it makes him stronger than all of us because he's able to do that where, who do you know that has that kind of courage to show their, their, their true feelings and how they feel? Who does? I've right. never seen one. Well, yeah. well, earlier we we asked you about Kane. You updated us there. What can you tell us about DC? And, you know, yesterday he did an interview where he said they're maybe asking him to let go of the 205 belt so that, he could, so that Jones and Gustafson can do their thing, um, which would still leave the opening for him and Lesnar. I know he's got, a, I think, a broken bone in his hand or something like that that still needs to heal, so he can't defend either one of the fights right now. But overall... What would you like to see from DC? Do you like one more fight, two more fight? Would you like them to extend that deadline of, I think it's March 19th when he turns 40 years old? How do you feel about all this? F uh, you know, for me, I, I, you know, because DC wants to prove that he's the real champ. He wants to defend the light heavyweight title, and then he wants to fight Brock, and then he wants to ride off in the horizon. But um, due to the fact that the, the you know, like you said, the the injury to the hand is stopping him from doing. Uh, defending the title at the light heavyweight division so i think at the end of the day i think i would just like to see him fight brock and then uh, move on because that's what he wants to do if he decides to change his mind then i'm white right there with him but uh to me i'm gaining an incredible <laughs> coach an incredible uh, you know teammate and an, an incredible friend so i i win no matter what with dc i don't i don't lose as a fighter you know, he's one of the great ones, you know, if not the greatest. And to me, he's the greatest only because of what he's done, you know. And I'm sure there's the debate on that. But to me, I, I consider him the greatest. And I think that his next journey as a coach is going to be one of the greatest as a coach personally. That's what I think because mm -hmm. uh, he loves the coach. Mm -hmm. 
Where are we at here? We haven't taken a break yet in the sec second hour, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's take this break. I think now is a good time. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM's Fight Nation Channel 93. Stay close, and we'll be right back. We still have King Mo ahead of us. He'll be calling in in about 15, 20 minutes. And our co-host for the day is Javier Mendez from the acclaimed American Kickboxing Academy Gym in San Jose, California, home of world champions like Frank Shamrock, King Velasquez, Daniel Cormier, Luke Rockhold, and their current, uh, well, DC is also current, but the one that's fighting on Saturday, and that's Habib Nurmagomedov. He defends his lightweight title against Conor McGregor. Hav will be in the corner of Nurmagomedov on Saturday. All right, we'll be right back.
taught Andy Griffith how to whistle. Here are Gorgeous George and Goes. This fall, hang out with Barstool Radio for their wild and outlandish takes on the hottest stories from college football, the NFL, celebrity gossip, and much more. Enjoy refreshing content that is by the common man for the common man on Barstool Radio on Power 85 and streaming on your phone or at home on Sirius XM connected devices and speakers. All right, let's do this quick segment. It's our daily debate. We'll, we'll include the coach here. I'm sure you'll have an opinion uh, because he studied this individual. And, of course, we are talking about the notorious Conor McGregor. Here's the question for today. Conor McGregor returns this week at UFC 229 after nearly two years away from MMA. Uh, and as we reflect on his career, what is his, his most impressive victory? Here are your four choices, guys. Chad Mendes at UFC 189. Jose Aldo at UFC 194. Nate Diaz at UFC 202. Eddie Alvarez at UFC 205. Dan, why don't you go first? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, Chad Mendez at UFC 189. Maybe it's a bit nostalgic because the event was so great, but I think it was a, a one where, you know, you could argue that, you know, uh, Connor's detractors may say he hasn't answered uh, all the questions, but what fighter has? I think he answered a lot of questions when he did face a, a big wrestler and Chad Mendez. Granted, it wasn't short notice. But it was an important fight for Conor McGregor's career. It was an important uh, fight for the company, especially at that time, uh, and a memorable card for us. So uh, I'll go with that one. Mm -hmm. uh, goes? I think one of the best testaments to a fighter's will is seeing how they rebound from a loss. And to see him come back against Nate Diaz after what happened in that first fight and prove that he could put it together, I thought that was a big step in his career, so I'm going to go with that one. Coach, which one uh, did you think <coughs> was his biggest win? Well, for, 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 for me, uh, the total package, uh, how he's able to trap you, how he's able to make you look stupid, Eddie Alvarez. Mm -hmm. Eddie Alvarez, he, he was a mastermind in that one. I mean, he screwed up Eddie so bad that, that you know Eddie was just one step behind him, and, and it was all planned. It wasn't a fluke. It, it, it was mastery, you know, and, and uh, to me, he showed mastery in that one. And so for me, that one by far exceeds any other one because he totally, totally mastered that one. The low-hanging fruit is Jose Aldo at 194 just because he said it, you know, on all these world tours and they were, they were rebooked so many times. And, of course, he clipped them in 13 seconds. But I'm not going to grab it. I also yeah. think it's Eddie Alvarez. I could have done all four. That's never happened in show history. I know, but but – uh, look, man, to predict the one-round victory, and he did it so easily, and he became a champ and, and ended Jose's reign, I mean, that was amazing. He shut so many people up. and uh, But a every single one of these has something special. But you're right, the Eddie Alvarez fight, he just picked them apart. You know what I mean? And not only that, I just remember him a few days before when he came in with the mean coat, skipping. I just couldn't believe how someone could be have so much fun and entertain and then yet when the fight has to happen he just made a great fighter look average that night you know uh so I, i'm gonna go i'm gonna side with coach javier mendez and and take eddie alvarez here are the results 2379 votes came in 44 percent did say jose aldo at ufc 194 in second place eddie alvarez uh 40 percent at ufc 205 a distant third, Nate Diaz at UFC 202, and Chad Mendez at UFC 189. That was 6%. So thank you for those that participated in today's daily debate. Junkie Nation, we love you. You guys always come strong. Let's get the last break out of the way. That way we can cruise to the finish line. One of your favorites is going to join us soon, Coach. King Mo Lawal. He'll join us. Former Strike Force Light Heavyweight Champ. Current Bellator Light Heavyweight? Middleweight? Moneyweight? We'll find out when we come back. If I was young, it didn't stop.
They can drink Mentos-flavored Diet Coke without their stomachs giving a single fuck. They are gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Chunky Radio. All right, Coach, I'm going to be direct here because we're running out of time. We really appreciate you hanging with us for two hours. I don't know if we'll be able to do this anytime soon. Uh, but uh, I wanted to ask you, <laughs> um, the thing that happened with Koscheck, did you guys ever mend the fences or did it finish with him just going his way? And he, you? He hates my guts. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, um, I owe him an apology because – I'm the head coach, and I took it uh, – as a head coach, you know. They're like your kids, yeah. and you know they got tantrums. They know You know that. And he was in those rare moments, and, and, and instead of calling him in my office and say, what the hell is your problem? Let's discuss this, or let's fight. Let's real fight. I don't care. You know, Let's do it. Let's get this out of the way. I didn't do that. So I did what a father should never do. I ignored him completely ignored him and what do you think he's gonna do you know he's gonna do what he did you know and and um do do i regret that part absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely because that should have never happened and i ignored him i mean don't get me wrong i mean he, a lot of the things he did were wrong but that doesn't matter i'm still the head coach yeah i my job was to protect him and protect him from himself and, and um you know i can look at it and say i failed him and I did. And, and uh, does, it, does it bug me to the point where, no, it doesn't because I'm correcting those mistakes. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Do I hate Kostic? Absolutely not. You know, I, I do not. You know, but will we ever be friends? He no, he hates me. So <laughs> it is what it is. Okay. Uh, did you say Mo's there? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We're ready to go. All right. King Mo joining us now on the hotline. He is a former Strike Force light heavyweight champ and a current moneyweight fighter in Bellator because you never know if he'll fight heavyweight. Light heavyweight or maybe even middleweight, like he's teased us for so many years. He joins us now on the hotline. What's up, King Muhammad? How are you doing? I'm good, man. Chill. What's up? What's up? What's up, man? Hey, you told me last time you were headed for middleweight, but you're you're booked against a light heavyweight. Uh, yeah, I know. I, but, check this out. Um, we try to do something because the thing is, it's crazy because Bellator hit me up and they're like, you're going to fight William, I think, October 30th or November 30th. So I was like, cool, whatever. All right. Zinder said, hey, Mo, um, things changed. Could you fight Machida um, at 195 or 190? And I was like, who? When? It's like December 15th. I was like, okay, that'd be kind of tough because I'm fighting William two weeks before, but you know what? I can weigh in right, fight William, beat him, and then cut the rest of the weight down. And they're like, well, no. We, we, we were just going to move your fight to you know, December 15th. So that's uh -huh. what we just did. Like, I don't know. They kind of hit. They kind of threw things at me, kind of whatever. But I'm fighting them at um, 205 um, in on December 15th in Hawaii. What I'm getting at is obviously you and Musasi have history. You have 205 history, but you do have history, and you beat him. Yeah. And when I see him getting his hand raised yeah. and everybody giving him his praises, I I think, wow, I wonder if Mo would be interested in that fight because he wants to go to 85, and he's got a win over Musasi. So I I figure it would it would really really be appealing to you. Oh, yeah, man, look, 185 is, a, is an option. It's a period. I definitely love to fight with Sasha again. He's hot. He's on fire, man. But I just got to make sure I can make this weight clean. And I think I can. I'm talking to this guy named Doug Coleman. He's I'm um, due out here. I'm um, nutritionist guy. I've been working with him. We got my body fat tested. And we got to make some more adjustments to make sure I can get down. So I'm kind of lean. I'm lean and I'm, I'm lean and I should be, but we can make some adjustments to get some of his muscle off. Yeah, you gave up the McDonald's years ago, right? You should be good. I had well, I had McDonald's. I had McDonald's for about two months. Two months, okay. Uh, hey, yeah. by the way, special surprise. We have one of your favorites uh, in studio here with us. He's been co-hosting. It's Javier Mendez. He's chilling with us. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's the man right there. He, he's about to have uh, three champions at at, at, uh, at AKA. Three. Yeah, and and coach, let me tell you something real fast. King Mo did a show with us a few years ago, and he told us publicly. He shared that you mean a lot to him and that when he had that staph infection when he was up north you were the one guy that was always there checking up on him and it meant a lot to him and uh 
Oh, King Mo got a little soft, man. It, you know, but it was a really, really <laughs> cool moment then. But he he really means it, uh, and he said it publicly on our show. No, I, you almost make me. I almost start crying too. So, <laughs> no, King Mo is he's my boy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's always been guy. my boy, no matter where he goes. And you know, he, he's a beautiful person. And uh, you know, that's right, Mo. I said you're a beautiful person. All right. <laughs> well, you know. Coach, one thing is about you, and one thing about Coach Mendez is <clears throat> straight up. Highly underrated, severely underrated. I don't. I feel like he doesn't get his just due like he should. For instance, Parasa Hobby gets praise. Um, uh, with the dude down there, Greg Jackson gets a lot of praise. Hob Mendez gets praise, but not the praise that he deserves. There's a little thing about it, man. He's gonna have a new champion, Habib. He has. He had Kane, Cormier in two weight classes, and Rock Hall on Rock Hall. Punk. Fitch, the list goes on, man. Gabe, I can hear some guys, some other guys there that are up and coming that I know are killers too. And I'm telling you, man, he's a highly underrated coach, highly underrated. A great, a great fight mind. Uh, I spent many, I spent many hours, a, aka, picking the phenol's brain. He, when it comes to fight, when it comes to fighting, he's a true professor in the fight game. That's kind words there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I I just do what I love, you know, and and uh, I I tell you a, a a good story about Mo when he was fighting for the title, and you know, it was like clockwork, you know. I, I tell him what to do, and then I said, when I say this, boom, now. So I said now, <laughs> and boom, there goes that boom out out like a light. Like I mean, it made me so happy that it was like we mentally clicked. You know, and uh, there's people that are my favorite, and then there's people that I love. You know, and and and, and Mo is my favorite that I love. He's one of my favorites because he's just a beautiful person inside. You know, and so I visit him uh, a lot when the staff thing, but it's because of that connection. You know, when you have a connection with somebody, you you always have the connection. You know, and right. uh, you know, Luke Rockhold. You know, he doesn't train with us at the present time, but it doesn't matter. King Mo to me is always AKA too, because mm. uh, to me it's it's never. Oh well, you leave my gym you're no longer. No, screw that. You know, yeah. If if we have a bond, we have a bond that'll never be broken. Mm-hmm. You know, and, uh, and that's and what I, I have. I'm gonna say some coach to any future fighters that are looking to go to AKA. If you get there and you're training and you don't eat full with Coach Mendez at least twice, then you're tripping. <laughs> There's no way. That's the man. You got the local faux spots around? Uh, you know them? Yeah, we, 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 <laughs> with Mo, we went to the faux spots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. And Mo, I haven't been there a while because Hani uh, Rambod from Evil Gen kicked me off of that stuff. So yeah. now he, he's changing my body around. He goes, you can't have that. Go, okay. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, you, it's all good. But you got to, you know, we, we, we can help. Yeah. To no, be healthy. That's I got to be healthy to be around. All right, goes. What do you yeah. have for Mo? We'll do some more champions. Mo, so we got some, some pretty big fights coming up, and we wanted to pick your brain. We, we used to do this a lot when you were in Vegas. We want to know, how mm-hmm. do you see that Conor McGregor fight playing out with Habib Nurmagomedov? Okay, so let me ask you this. I think Conor is you know, he's a, great, he's a great talent, supremely confident. What do y'all think about his boxing skills? Do you think they improved? Because I heard people say Conor's boxing skills had to improve because he transferred Floyd Mayweather. Let me, what do y'all think? Do you think his boxing skills improved? No, I, 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 I would hope I so. I think it's different. I think the timing is different. Oh. And I think the layoff is going to hurt a lot. Well, 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 here's the thing, right? I don't think his boxing improved because here's the thing. He kept MMA coaches for the fight. Yeah, that's true. So pretty much he's doing MMA. He's kept MMA coaches for the fight. So his jab, he's throwing the same jab I saw him throw in MMA that he threw versus Floyd. Floyd just didn't fear because that's behind it. Now his, his stance, Conor has to stop his back foot. First, you know what, I'm not going to stay in this there because I, I might cause I, I, I might try to get some tips away, but Conor's stance will hurt him versus Habib. The, 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 the pressure Habib brings will affect him. The, the fact that he has to worry about Habib taking him down will affect him. So if he holds his ground, he might get taken down. If he backs up, he'll go against the cage. I think that this is Habib's fight to win or lose. I, if he will lose, he has to get by knockout early in the first, early in the first two rounds. That's about it. Other than that, I got Habib winning by, I don't know, uh, submission, ground and pound, stoppage, TKO, KO, all four of the above. 
That's why we bring them on. Yeah. He always adds that wrinkle, right, that we don't think about. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your neck of the woods. We got another big fight coming up there in that Grand Prix, Ryan Bader and Matt Mitrione. How do you see that one playing out? It just depends on Matt Mitrione. It depends on him because if he if he if he can fight in a good stance and uh, keep things keep things at, um, at a good distance and uses and uses southpaw footwork, he can get the win. But at the same time, if he starts to overreact every time Bader changes levels or pushes him, he can gas. That fight right there is a toss up, really. You know what I'm saying? When I, when I see it, it, it comes down to what, how confident Matt Mitrione is. Because when you watch it, sometimes those wrestlers, he don't seem that confident. So if he, if, if he can defend a few of uh, Bader's takedowns, then that, that could be an issue. But I don't know. That's a toss up right there. Well, going really, really quick back to what something Javier was saying, uh, you always consider him AKA. I know you're at ATT now, but can you maybe point to one thing that you took from AKA and were, was able to implement something that you'll always remember and that is part of your game now over there at ATT? Well, that's a lot of things. Um, timing for one, with, with Javier, do a lot of timing drills. Um, shadow boxing, when I first got there, I can shadow box a lick. Did a lot of shadow boxing. Chain wrestling, of course, you know, saying with, with uh, transitions. I feel like when it comes down to transitions, AKA might be the best in the game when it comes to transitions going from punches to kick to takedown. They're one of the best. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's a lot of things like just jujitsu, just, just the mentality more than anything. The mentality of being an AKA fighter is a lot different than a lot of these other gyms. All right. If you want to know how, go there on Monday. Go there Monday at noon. <laughs> and see how they get down. King Muhammad, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio, he'll be facing Liam McGeary at Bell Tour 210, December 15th in Hawaii. All right, Dan, Tom, our fight analyst, what do you have for King Muhammad? Again, I, I give King Mo this credit uh, almost every time he's on, but the first time I ever heard about Dagestan was on this show uh, when they were interviewing, I believe, King Mo and DC was on, on the phone as well in the, in the background. Uh, kind of shout out back to those days. So uh, I, I appreciate your prediction there, Mo, but I want to get another prediction. Of course, you know we're going to ask you about the, the Bellator Heavyweight Grand Prix, but what about this Welterweight br Grand Prix? Do you, mm -hmm. have, do you have any, any thoughts? Do you have any dark horses you like? or, or what, What's your thoughts on that, Mo? Oh, man. Okay, um, because Lima looked great. Yeah, he did. Man, um, Lima looked great. John Fitch is a problem. And here's the thing, right? I get this. I like Roy McDonald. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's man, that, that boy's a warrior. But my worry is the fight Musashi might have done so much damage that he might have to be out, of the, be out of the tournament. I hope that's not the case. But it might could be. So it could change things. It could bring in Lorenz Larkin or Eric, or Eric Silver to the tournament as well. But there's one guy that I'm very interested in seeing. That's Ed Ruth. Yeah. Look, Ed Ruth is, I don't know, man. It's something about him, man. Like, he's so calm, good jab, he's long, great balance, great. Just his, I feel like his fight IQ is, is especially body control. I don't know. I, it's hard to explain, man. Like, it's something about him. Like, I, I feel like he's got he's to he's break out soon. He's gonna be like Daniel was. That's a good comparison. That's well, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping that it's not too soon because he's still young in the game. Mm -hmm. I'm just hoping it's not too soon to put him in this tournament. But if he can get on the roll, he's gonna be hard to beat just because just, just, just off his wrestling and his control. Are you still gonna manage to put Ryzen into your career, or are you done with them? Uh, I don't know. It depends. They hit me up. I, I'm, you know, I'm whatever. I, I don't know what they're doing, but I know they're doing something with Kyoji right now, and I like I like what they're doing with Kyoji. They're pushing Kyoji. Um, I kind of like what they're doing. There. It's, it's different, a different taste of MMA, a different alternative. But I like it though. I'd like to see you and Crow Cop dance one more time. Although I don't know if you're interested in that. I'm interested, man. Look, I'll dance with anybody. You know what I'm saying? Whoever, whoever wants to fight, we can fight, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I got this to, to get paid and fight and have fun. As long as I'm doing three or one three. Cool. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, Mo. Hey, always great to catch up with you, man. We look forward to talking to you on Fight Week. Hopefully, we get out there to Hawaii. I think we're all putting in credentials for that one. So, I hope you have a safe camp, oh, and, and we'll see you in a couple of months, hopefully. Hey, 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 Coach, Coach, think about this. Man. Think about what you, Habib as a belt. Think about the first time we saw Habib step foot in the AKA with no English. <laughs> think about how 
how things come full circle. <laughs> yeah. You know, when he first came in, yeah. okay, he can speak no yeah. English. And he was kind of just like, just there working out. It, it, but Cobb touched him and kept on improving and improving him. Now he has stand-up. He has everything, man. And he's your next champion, coach. Well, Aiden, I got to thank you for that because uh, you're the one that asked if he can come. And I said, absolutely. You know, King Mo's the one that brought me. Oh, uh, wow. Habib. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was King King Mo. So he's introducing yeah. everybody to Dagestan. Yeah, King, King Mo brought wow, him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. yeah he, he, King Mo yeah, asked after, him. Yeah. After I saw him beat Kamal Shah Bruce, so I was like, man, we have to get that kid. So I talked to his coach, Marat, and Marat was like, cool. And he was there worried because he's fighting Greece and T-Bow. So he came to his camp for Greece and T-Bow at, at, um, at AKA and got the victory. That's a great yeah, start. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right, King Mo. Thank you very much for the time, man. We we always appreciate you. You know that. Uh, congratulations, y'all. Congratulations, Coach. For all right, next buddy. Champ. Take care, buddy. All right, take it easy. Thank you, Mo. Right. What an outstanding fellow, huh? I I, I love King Mo. King like Mo's I said, awesome. I would visit him a lot, and and uh, he he's you know he's always a lifelong friend. Mm -hmm. I, that's the thing about this sport, you know. Uh, a lot of my guys, they're 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 friends for life, you know, and and uh, it doesn't matter where they go, what they do, whatever camps they're at. I don't care, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, you got This thing is about life, and it's about it's about uh, you know enjoying your life, not not you're with me, you're not with me. Screw that, you know. Mm -hmm. And not everybody's going to be happy with McDonald's all the time. Someone wants to switch over. You, you shouldn't fault them for liking something else, you know, or situations are different, you know. And Thank you for giving us two hours on today's show. We really appreciate it. Hopefully the next time you're in Vegas, we can pull you in. We still have more questions for you, but we had a blast. I know it's a busy week, and I want to thank you again. Follow him on Twitter, at AKA Hoff, and thank you to Carrie Ann Melendez uh, for her time, as well as King Mo. Tomorrow we'll have Benson Henderson, uh, Brian Ortega will stop by on Friday. It's going to be a fun week. Keep it locked on MMA Junkie throughout the week. we got to get out of here, folks. Go out there and be a champion. Even if there were 40 more